What's up guys, KS here. Thanks for joining me today as always. Today we're looking at the Wilson Combat Beretta 92 Centurion with the Vertec frame. The Beretta 92 was first produced in 1972 and replaced the M1911A1 as the main dedicated sidearm for the US forces in 1985 with the designation of the M9. It's known for being reliable and rugged as well as very accurate in most hands. Along the way, many different models and clones have been released to fit the needs for various people, and several manufacturers have dipped their toes in the arena as well. Wilson Combat, of course, and Langdon Tactical. There are others, but those two seem to be the most notable. We'll be coming back to the Langdon Tactical at a later time, but for now, it's Wilson Combat's turn. Loaded to the nines, the 92 Centurion is ready for action. Let's dive in and take a look. Before we jump in, I want to thank my Patreons for helping out the channel. You guys and gals are amazing. This is a crowdsourced channel and becoming a Patreon or simply checking out the links down below to gear I actually use does help keep the content coming since YouTube doesn't want us around anymore. All right, let's do a couple of quick side-by-sides with the Beretta. I'll tell you, this has been a lot of fun to put together, no doubt about that. I thought it would be an interesting comparison to bring out a gun that we haven't seen in a while. This is the CZ SP-01. Now, this is the Shadow Orange. I do not have a review on it, uh, but I will at some point in time. That gun isn't going anywhere, and it's not necessarily new to the market. So it will happen, just not yet. And I don't want to clang these guys together too much. I just like them a little bit too much. Much. But that Beretta on the bottom is going to be 7.75 inches long. These guys are actually really just about neck and neck. And in terms of height, we're going to be 5.5 inches tall. I'll try and line these guys up as best I can. We're talking 1.5 inches wide. That CZ might be just a little bit more narrow, but not by a whole lot. And then we've got 4.3 inches on the barrel and about 33.3 ounces heavy, CZ being just a little bit heavier than that. So a really interesting comparison. I think an if I could only have one might be in order. One more comparison that I thought might be <laughs> kind of funny and kind of interesting at the same time would be something like this Glock 19X. Now it's relatively common. A lot of people are familiar with that Glock 19X being the same uh, a slide length as the 19. But just to give you an idea of where that Centurion sits, it's going to be a little bit longer. Now the uh, 19X does have a threaded barrel in it right now from Silencer Co. Uh, because I run the can on it with some frequency. But then our grip, here's where things are pretty close. Now that Glock's a little smaller all the way around and of course lighter, uh, but, uh, but still an interesting comparison on this one as well, just to give you guys a little bit more of a reference where that Beretta stacks up. We're going to be taking a walk around the frame here in just a moment, but I did want to show you guys the magazines. Now, it does come with two steel 17-round magazines, good construction. They worked quite well at the range, no complaints there. But it also comes with a third magazine, and that's going to be an extended 20-round magazine. A little different finish on there, as you'll notice, but uh, just to give you guys an idea of what this looks like in the gun, you kind of have to ram that thing in there. There you go. I mean, that is quite a setup. It'd be a great backup magazine, that sort of thing. Or if you just want to <laughs> plank a little bit longer at the range, you can definitely do that. We'll throw this guy back in here in just a moment. I did want to give you guys an idea of a couple of things. The internal magwell on this is fantastic. They did a great job of uh, making sure that this was very smooth, very beveled, makes that magazine insertion a little bit easier. And speaking of, Wilson Combat adds on this little magazine guide. That's brilliant. I think it's great. And it also feels good as part of the grip. It, it even almost gives it kind of a, a fastback or a bobtail look to it. So I think that's a really nice add-on. And when you throw that magazine in there, I think that looks really good. Again, I think it's a good attention to detail. Nice little add-on there. Adds a little bit of weight as well. Now, when we get to the grip, a couple of things you'll notice. Now, this is a Vertec grip, which I'll talk about more in a moment, but we've got some very nice VZ grip panels here. I love the texture on this. It's got the Wilson Combat logo. Now, one thing about this model, these are not the original grips. It actually comes with uh, black and gray grips. It's still with the logo in it, of course. I didn't really like that very much. I wanted the uh, the OD green. Now the non-Vertec model comes with this color. So I guess they want to differentiate the models. It's the only reason I can think that they do that. But Wilson Combat does sell these and they're not horribly expensive, but uh, they're not necessarily cheap either. Still, I wanted to go with this look 
and the texture again is absolutely fantastic. I think they they feel great in the hand. And then in terms of the checkering, it's another thing that uh, Wilson Combat does with their firearms. They add additional checkering on here, and I have to say it feels tremendous in the hand and it absolutely keeps you locked in while you're shooting. Same thing on the front strap as well. Really nice attention to detail. I love that. Um, anytime you can get some good <laughs> checkering on a firearm, it just uh, makes the experience all the better. Now I mentioned that this is a Vertec grip. So what that means is it doesn't have that traditional Beretta, I guess you could call it hump and more contoured style grip. This reminds me a little bit more of something like a 1911. It's uh, flatter, it's straighter. If you guys are familiar with the uh, uh, M, uh, M9A3, I believe it is. Uh, the uh, That grip is similar to this as well, although it also comes with another uh, grip panel you can put on to give that a uh, little bit more meat and potatoes in the back. Again, I just like this style quite a bit. And then we've got our beaver tail and a nice swope right here. It gets, uh, it gets very smooth as it blends into the grip, so just feels tremendous in the hand, I have to say. Now, when we talk about the controls, a couple of things, you guys will notice that uh, this is a steel extended magazine release that uh, Wilson Combat does. It's got some checkering on it. It's great. I mean, it really works very well. It's easy to release those magazines and really pops them right out there. Uh, so a uh, nice attention, again, steel. So adding a little bit of weight there as well. Now, as we move up, and we'll come back to our slide here in a moment, but I did want to point out one thing, that if this is going to be uh, cocked, you're not going to be able to carry this particular model cocked and locked because it's not a safety it's just a decocker. It's the G model. So uh, it goes right back to home there. And I prefer that. Now, I am not a Beretta 92 expert, so you experts are going to have to holler down below. But to my understanding, the G model is preferred by many because it also affects that trigger pull a little bit. It's a little bit higher quality trigger pull along with the D hammer spring that's in here, wherever that's located. Again, not an expert, but, uh, but that combination, a lot of people really prefer. So I can see why. I mean, it's fantastic. And of course, we'll talk more about the trigger in a moment. But again, not cocked and locked. It's a decocker only. There's no uh, there's no safety there. It does not lock down. So uh, there's another good advantage to that. Again, we'll come back in uh, in just a moment on that. Now we do have our uh, slide release, slide lock, slide release here. It does work very well as both. It's got a little bit of texture, a little bit of a serration on it as well. And it also I like the position. It really is exactly where my thumb is. So uh, worked quite well. I didn't have to reach or change my grip or anything like that, which is very cool. And then we've got our takedown lever. We will take this down a little bit later on. It's a different kind of takedown, but extremely easy to do. And then as we move up on our frame, we do have our accessory rail for lights, lasers, chainsaws, all that good stuff, any of your common toys. And it works quite well. It's a Picatinny, so um, you can definitely do anything you need to with it. Now, one other thing on this, it's the 92A1 rounded trigger guard. There's no texture or anything like that, but it is certainly big enough. If you've got gloved hands or anything like that, you're not going to have a problem. And really nice contours as we move around inside that, uh, that trigger well right there and a little bit of an undercut underneath as well. So again, a finely finished gun, and I'm sure I've probably missed a couple things on the frame. So you guys are going to have to point those things out. Um, again, we'll come back to the trigger in a moment, but uh, but a lot going on with this. I love the configuration of the Vertec grip. I think it's just the right size, at least for me. All right, let's do a quick walk around on the slide. This is about take number four on this. Uh, but a lot of similarities between this and the other Beretta 92s that are out there. It does not have any front serrations or anything like that. We'll have to come back to that at a later time. There are options that have front serrations. But as we move to the back, we do have some rear serrations. Uh, they're okay. I mean, they're they're fine. They could be a little bit deeper. But one thing that helps, and I mentioned this during the, uh, the frame portion of the video, is the fact that the decocker actually serves a little bit uh, to give you some leverage while racking the slide, but it's an advantage to the decocker. If this is a safety and you were going to use that as leverage, there is actually a chance that you could activate that safety. And so when you were going to fire, it would not do so because the safety would be on. But in this case, even if you accidentally put this thing down, it's just going to decock it. It doesn't render the gun, well, useless, if you will. So again, another advantage that I prefer to the decocker, but, uh, but otherwise that's the side of your frame there. And as we move up, our sight situation. Now, the front sight's going to be an Ameriglow High Def Tritium Night Sight. I love these sights. This is absolutely fantastic. I think it's a great add on. The sight picture 
is great. It's easy to pick up uh, this at the range or even outside, anything like that. Very high def, like that quite a bit. And then we've got some Wilson Combat blacked out uh, U-notch style sights back here. Um, they are not serrated or anything like that, but uh, but I like this. I like the setup. I like that U-notch, um, that sight line up there. I know you can't see the front sight very well but I think it is fantastic. Now you do have a ledge for one-handed manipulation. So in terms of sights, this is just about the ideal setup, at least for me. Now, some other things about uh, Berettas in general, you'll notice that the uh, the slide is open on the top, so we've got an exposed barrel. Some people criticize this, saying that debris can get in there. I can't speak to that. I haven't had that experience, so you guys are gonna have to holler down below and, and let us know your experience with that. But I think it's an iconic look. Of course, a lot of people know this from something like Lethal Weapon or Die Hard, that sort of thing. Uh, and I think it's actually a really cool look. It's something very different. You don't see this too often. Now for the Centurion model, a couple of things. That slide is gonna be a little bit shorter than your standard Beretta 92, 92 FS, things like that. And then the barrel is shorter as well. And we do get a nice little target crown there. That's also a Wilson add-on. So um, aids and accuracy from what I understand, um, it gives it a different look as well. But, uh, but again, a nice attention to detail there. So uh, guys, there's your slide on the Breda 92 Centurion. I like what they've done with it. I think it's got the features it really needs. All right, let's take a look at the disassembly of the Beretta 92. All of your 92s are gonna disassemble the same way. So um, we've got a little button here on the right side of the frame. This can be depressed. And I found that you really have to, you have to kind of beat it up a little bit, at least on this particular model. And then we do have our takedown lever here. You have to do both at the same time. So I'm gonna be pressing on the button on the other side and then I'll pull my lever down. And once I do, you'll notice that that slide partially pops right off. That's that uh, spring tension in there. So so we're just going to take our slide off and now we've got the usual components in here. We're going to take our spring and guide rod out and then we'll take our barrel out as well. Now I'm going to talk about the barrel first and foremost. Now keep in mind guys, I am not, I'm not an expert on things uh, by any stretch. So I, you know, I don't really necessarily know the purpose of this. I, I know it, it certainly has to do with the lockup and the action and all that, but you, you experts out there are going to have to tell us a little bit more about why this does this. There's just not enough information that I can find out there. But we do have a nice polished feed ramp on here, nice attention to detail, and another look at our target crown. I mean, this is this is a good looking barrel, and I'll tell you, um, this only has about 400 rounds or so in it, but it looks brand new. I mean, it really does. There is not a mark on it that I can see. So uh, the finish that they put on this is absolutely fantastic. Now, when we take a look at our slide, First and foremost, when you pick this thing up by itself, you'll notice it hardly weighs anything. Even though it's steel, it's incredibly light. And even though with all the lights in here, it's gonna be really difficult to capture these rails, but they're they're huge on the inside here. So it's, it's, it's very easy to clean and maintain this thing. Uh, there, there aren't a lot of nooks and crannies in here or anything like that. So it'll only take you a moment or two to clean your slide. Uh, but, uh, but a very interesting slide there. And then we've got our guide rod and spring assembly. That guide rod is steel. It is not captive. That isn't a big deal to me. I know some people fuss about that. They like the captive uh, guide rod and spring assemblies. I don't really care one way or the other. It doesn't matter to me as long as it works. And then give you an idea of the rails on the frame. They are super beefy, even though they're not terrifically long you can still tell that there's plenty there when you're racking the slide. I mean, it really is effortless. But again, easy to clean, easy to maintain. So let's put this guy back together and we're just gonna reverse the process like we do with most other firearms. So here's where things get interesting though. This barrel likes to give me fits when I'm putting this thing together. Look at that, it actually dropped just fine. This, uh, this little uh, piece that goes right here uh, tends to sometimes stand up. So you have to kind of finagle it in there, but it seemed to work pretty well this time. And then we've got our guide rod and spring assembly. Throw that guy in just like so. You wanna make sure that it's uh, even and, uh, and, and put in just like that. And then we've got our slide and frame and we are gonna lock it back. And once we do, we'll flip our lever and then we are good to go. So guys, that's a disassembly of the Breda 92. I'll tell you what, it's effortless and easy to maintain. The shooting experience with the Wilson Combat 92 Centurion was exactly what I thought it would be. Fantastic. Right off the bat, I took note at how well balanced the Centurion was. 
The combination of steel, aluminum, shorter slide and barrel, as well as the Vertec grip truly felt amazing in hand. The recoil impulse was hardly noticeable and the muzzle rise was slight and you can blame NEUC on me. I could feel how well fitted and smooth the racking of the slide was with every shot. The G10 panels and added checkering in both the front and the back of the grip kept the gun firmly planted in the hand. The front high def sight and the blacked out rears is to me the perfect combination, though the bigger front sight post means that precision practice may be more of a chore. The trigger, although we'll look at it more closely in a moment, I'll say that it was everything I'd hoped for in a Wilson combat tuned trigger. The only complaint is in using an overhanded racking method. The decocker definitely gets in the way, though you can train through it. Let's take a look at the trigger for a moment or two. Now keep in mind, this is tuned by Wilson Combat, so it does have the trigger job, and I recommend that. If you're gonna be going into this thing, I would spring for that trigger job. So it is double action, single action, two different types of pull here. We've got a steel trigger, of course, no safety or anything. It's not like our polymer wonders out there. But our double action, a couple of things about this. There's your double action. I will tell you what, this is unbelievably smooth and it's weighing at about 7.8 pounds which is just unbelievable i mean it really is a wonderful double action pull i enjoy it. in fact i almost enjoy the double action more than the single action of course not quite not exactly and i'll show you the reset here in a moment as well but i want to show you the uh, the single action on this guy. We do have a little bit of take up as we get to the wall, but it is super clean. There, There's just almost nothing there. And then our trigger pull, this is coming in about 3.7 pounds. I mean, it's fantastic. Now there are certainly lighter double actions out there, but it still feels amazing. And then our reset, our reset's right there. It's pretty short. It's not super short. Um, there are definitely shorter options, but it's not bad. And then we get back to our wall, and I'll do this a couple more times. There's your break. I Just an awesome break there. And then our reset. And then a follow-up. There's a little bit of air there. You'll notice a little bit of air. I'll do this one more time. Our reset right there and a little bit of air. That's one thing about double action, single actions. It's a little bit unusual. You've got a little bit of air between your reset and your uh, your wall. But I'll tell you what, man, this trigger, this trigger is unbelievable. Uh, again, I recommend that uh, tune trigger from Wilson Combat if you can do it. So guys, what do I think of the Wilson Combat Beretta 92 Centurion? It's absolutely fantastic. The extra checkering in the VZ grips, the high def front and blacked out rear sights, the shortened barrel and slide, and of course the trigger. That Wilson trigger job truly dials this up to 11, and I recommend springing for it if you can. Not only is this superbly balanced, but I think it looks awesome as well. To me, it's just about the complete package. Okay, it's not perfect, it's too heavy for everyday carry to many, but as a home defense option and a range blinker, it's nearly perfect. Guys, be sure to let me know what you think and if you agree or disagree. If you're a fan of the Breda 92, regardless of model, I want to know, so be sure to leave a comment down below. Otherwise, thanks so much for joining me and I will see you next time.